Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. A town is in shock as a family in Blanchard, North Dakota, suffers an unthinkable loss, all due to carbon monoxide. Good evening and thank you for joining us. A family member tells us what happened Sunday is a tragic accident following a cookout and fun day with family. Four people are dead and four others recovering from carbon monoxide poisoning. Emergency responders rescued three children before they started feeling sick. Hillsboro firefighters then pulled five others from the basement of the home. Four people were pronounced dead at the scene. Homeowner Ross Matichek, Ricky Fisher, Megan Fisher, and six-year-old Jabin Numis. Bonnie Fisher and three female children survived. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop visited Blanchard today to find out more about the family and what happened. The Trail County Sheriff's Office says a propane tankless water heater was being used to fill a large swimming pool at Ross Matichak's home. Carbon monoxide built up inside the home because it was not properly vented. A neighbor says that Ross Matichak and his ex-wife built their home here. That same neighbor did not want to appear on camera, but did say Ross was a good neighbor who would help anyone. It's hard. I couldn't even imagine what that family is going through. Jensen lives in Blanchard, and although she didn't know the Matichek's or the Fishers very well, she was shocked to hear about the tragic accident. Oh, I mean, it's a small town around here. Everyone knows everyone. Everyone's so friendly. Jensen says her own home does not have a carbon monoxide detector, and this situation has changed her mind. No, it's definitely something that we're probably going to invest in because knowing that it has happened and that something like that can happen very easily. In Blanchard, North Dakota, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. Bonnie Fisher is listed in good condition at a Fargo hospital. Her sister tells us a fund has been set up to help the family. And if you would like to help, you can donate to the Fisher Memorial Fund at any choice financial bank. Violence escalates between two immigrant groups fighting a street war over problems with one another. A man was found unconscious last night after being beaten with a baseball bat in South Fargo. The fights began on Sunday night, one at Lindenwood Park and another at a South Fargo apartment where police say men used a crowbar to smash windows of two cars. And then last night, another fight broke out at the Spirit Shop parking lot on 13th Avenue with a baseball bat. That fight ended at an apartment a block away where a man was sent to the hospital with head trauma. Police say these fights are not gang related, but the immigrant groups are not being cooperative. There's all kinds of things going on in this neighborhood that unfortunately none of us like to see, but what do we do about it? You know, I don't know that answer. Um, I think we're a tight-knit community still, even though, you know, we're growing and becoming more diverse, and I think we can stand together and hopefully work on things together as a community, but short answer, I don't know what we need to do, but yes, it is, it's gotten to be extremely annoying. Police haven't made any arrests, and that's frustrating to some people living and working near where the fights happened. We'll hear from them coming up on Valley News Live at 6. It's been another hot, muggy day out there and quiet so far. Will that continue tonight? Let's find out in first weather. Hutch? Well, for most of us, Andrea, the quiet weather will continue into the evening, but boy, is it hot. Draw a line from around Detroit Lakes through the central Red River Valley, Fargo-Moorhead, and southeast North Dakota, and temperatures are from 85 to 100 degrees, 97 right now in Sisseton. It's 20 degrees cooler in Langdon. And the wind and the direction of movement of the cooler air is coming our way. That's the good news. Here's a look at the radar. There is some strong thunderstorm development. Uh, moved through Traverse County and is now making its way through the Morris and Benson area with some large hail. And this storm system will probably make its way very close to Morris with some sizable hail over an inch in diameter. We can see it from our tower cam. Time lapse there. You can see the storm percolating. Your hour by hour forecast shows temperatures really cooling down as we get toward late evening. So right now, keep the house buttoned up, but this evening and overnight, crack the window. It looks like we'll have some more comfortable temperatures to talk about in the forecast. We'll do that in just a couple of moments. All right, thanks, Hutch. An elderly man has died after getting hit by a semi west of Devil's Lake. The North Dakota Highway Patrol says it happened Tuesday morning about two miles west of Devil's Lake. The driver was an 85-year-old man from Perth, North Dakota. He was not wearing a seatbelt and was pronounced dead at the crash scene. His name is being withheld until family are notified. We have new information on a propane tank fire on Sunday. It's being ruled accidental, according to investigators and the Fargo Fire Department. 
They say the propane tank had a leak which was exposed to a heat source and then ignited. It's not known what the heat source was. The fire happened around 4 in the afternoon Sunday and closed a section of Broadway. University of North Dakota President Robert Kelly has announced he's retiring in January. Kelly says he's been working at universities for 46 years and it's simply time to retire. So what are we talking? You just feel you're at the age now? There's a couple other things you'd like to do? And... Well, you know, we've been planning on uh, the next phase of our lives, both personal, uh, not so much professional anymore. I've been at this since 1969 as an assistant professor in New Mexico. Okay. So I think it's time for me to, uh, and to, for Marcia, to move into the next phase of our lives. Kelly says his family will likely move to New Mexico or the Denver area where they have family and build a new home. The, re, uh, the uh, search for a new UND president will be announced by the North Dakota University System in the coming weeks. And today on the U University of North Dakota campus, Harrington Hall was evacuated around noon and it was a false alarm. A faculty member suspected a gas leak on the second floor. The Grand Forks Fire Department was called to check the building and gave the all clear an hour later and then people were able to re-enter the building. A Clearwater County Sheriff's deputy is under investigation for allegedly walking into a woman's house by mistake while intoxicated. Police got a sh call shortly after midnight on Sunday from a woman who was home alone and said she heard someone else inside. When police arrived, the intruder had already left. Police learned later the intruder was off-duty Sheriff's deputy Tom Davis, who is a nine-year veteran of the Clearwater County Sheriff's Office. Davis is on unpaid leave pending the outcome of the investigation. Moorhead police have arrested two men after a chase this morning with more arrests possible. Police say the original chase started after a report of two vehicles driving recklessly on River Shore Drive South just after 6 in the morning. A vehicle that was reported stolen from Detroit Lakes was found abandoned. The truck was found a short time later stuck under the I-94 bridge. Police found several stolen items in the truck from an earlier burglary report. Police searched the area and arrested a juvenile and DeAndre LaCroix. Officers say they anticipate arresting more people. A major player in the region's medical community is doing some show and tell today. Essentia Health is showing off its $50 million hospital tower. Hospital officials say this third wing is needed to keep up with growth in the community and the hospital's increasing patient load. The addition increases the number of available beds by about a third to 133. The emergency department is also larger, doubling in size. Another $10 million addition is scheduled to open later this month. The hashtag Beaverbacker is floating around social media as people protest the Fargo Park District's decision to allow the trapping and killing of beavers along the Red River. The Park District says it has suffered thousands of dollars in damages to trees and it wants to take action. Protesters are hoping to stop the Park District from killing the beavers and suggest other options, including relocation and planting trees away from beavers. An online petition has been started, and if you'd like to see it, we have a link at valleynewslive.com. Just click on the hot button. The mosquitoes are out, and mosquito control is biting back. Crews will be out spraying tonight in Grand Forks and East Grand Forks. The trucks are heading out at 9.30 this evening. And this reminder, you are advised to keep people and pets out of the cloud of chemicals as the truck passes your house. If you'd like more information about the Grand Forks Mosquito Control Program, head to valleynewslive.com and click on the hot button. From picnics to barbecues, some of our favorite foods are back for the summer. But dietitians say it's a good idea to always think about how to make a recipe healthier. Instead of burgers, try using lean chicken to make kebabs and add some peppers and vegetables. Instead of serving soda, try infusing water with cucumbers or watermelon. And find a healthier alternative for mayo in your potato salad. So switching out the Greek yogurt for mayo in any of your potato salads, a nice little switch. You get more protein from the Greek yogurt, quite a bit less dietary fat, less calories, and it's going to keep you full a lot longer than just the mayo. For recipes and more advice for summer cooking, go to valleynewslive.com and look for this story under the Valley Today tab.